Bienvenue to Swong to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. In this edition, a woman's right to choose an abortion is under real threat in the United States. Even though the Supreme Court was embarrassed when a leaked memo revealed what many suspected, that the Republican bias court was uh, moving to overturn a key ruling from 1973 that legalized abortion in the U.S., there are no signs their course will be changed. Already, states like Texas and Oklahoma have made it practically impossible to get an abortion by lowering the time limit after insemination. Our reporter, Pierrick Laurent, joins us now from Los Angeles. Pierrick, you started filming this report uh, before this whole story broke. Um, what was it that attracted you to, sort of, to explore the issue of abortion rights before this very story happened? Well, Mark, I think it's important to remind our viewer first that a large majority of Americans remain in favor of abortion rights. Uh, but at the same time, for decades, Christian evangelicals in the U.S. have been advocating for a complete ban on abortion. And in these past few months only, we've seen some real changes on the ground, uh, mainly in Texas, where the Heartbeat Act went into effect last September. Uh, it implemented drastic restrictions on access to abortion. And then just a few weeks ago, a young woman was arrested and put in jail in Texas. She was only 26 years old. Uh, she was put in jail for a self-induced abortion, although there was no way to charge her for something like this. So all these raised questions that we tried to answer. Pierrick, thank you very much indeed. Let's take a look then uh, at Pierrick's report. Each morning is the same in front of this abortion clinic. These are the best little speakers in the whole world. Love these things. If you could take my right now, it would Susan makes it her mission to block out the anti-abortion ralliers. It drowns out the it drowns out the protesters for the patients that are here. Can I give you this Bible? There's forgiveness for abortion. Every car that enters passes through demonstrators on one side and the abortion clinic volunteers on the other in rainbow vests. Lady from Mississippi, would you come pray with our pastor? Good morning. I am a friend of the clinics. I am not with those people out there. I am here to drown those people out. Susan is what the clinic calls an escort. Here, come on, we'll get you in. She accompanies women who come here for an abortion to both protect them and offer them reassurance. Around the corner, they start yelling for a little while. As soon as they start yelling, I'm going to talk to you about anything, the weather, your shoes, whatever, just to drown them out. The Tulsa Women's Clinic is one of the last abortion centers in the state of Oklahoma. But the majority of patients now come from the neighboring state, Texas, where since last fall, abortion is prohibited after six weeks of pregnancy, even in cases of rape or incest. Once September 1 hit and the law went into effect, our um, patient load doubled, if not tripled. We used to see an average of about 20 patients a day. That was a, a, a big day. We are now up to 40 to 60 patients a day. Overnight, Oklahoma has become a haven for Texas women who want abortions, like 18-year-old Sierra. This high school student who works two jobs to help her family drove six hours overnight after her shift at Amazon in Texas. Because I was like right on the line. I, I didn't have a heartbeat yet, but it was like five weeks and six days. And it's been hard on my body just these past few weeks. Like, I couldn't imagine doing nine months. Her cousin Lily came with her and is the only person in her family to know she is pregnant. She looked up millions of clinics, tons, and she called me crying because they were all booked and she couldn't find one and then some of them were really expensive and she, she was really upset and stressed out about it. Lily knows all too well what it's like. At 19, she became a mother one month ago. The reason why I couldn't get an abortion is because they, they became, whenever I became pregnant, that's whenever they, you know, they stopped allowing it in Texas. So I wasn't able to get it no more and I couldn't travel. 
I don't personally have a car, so I couldn't travel and go get it. Sierra spent $250 on gas and a hotel. There you go. And the abortion pill costs an average of $600. It's not reimbursed by health insurance in the United States. In the waiting room, dozens of women hope to have an abortion. Tiffany, the head nurse, has been working overtime for months to see them all. All right. All right. Recently, another upset for the staff of the clinic. Oklahoma has just passed a law similar to Texas to take effect immediately. Demoralized, Tiffany does not know how to tell her patients. Sorry, guys, we can't do anything today. Um, you know, this bill is in effect and now it's against the law. Um, and that's women traveling from, you know, Texas, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, all over. Where are they going to find access for abortions? I mean, you could count on one hand the number of clinics uh, in the surrounding states. It's insane. And the governor of Oklahoma goes even further. Starting in August, performing abortions will be considered a crime, punishable by 10 years in prison and several thousand dollars in fines. <laughs> it's really disheartening if you want to know the truth. That's what it is. It's really disheartening. Desperate women are going to do desperate things, and you're going to start seeing self-managed abortions that are dangerous, and that may, then, I mean, people will die. Women will die. Outside the clinic, pro and anti-abortion supporters are more divided than ever. And tensions are rising. This is a person. Do you not see this that is a is human? Not a person. This is a human life, Susan. Has it taken a breath? So taking a breath has is what it makes a human. Taken a breath. I'm asking you, has it taken a breath? Makes a person human. That's what it says in the Bible. That's when the soul, yeah, your first breath, you're human at first. Wants to scream and yell. She wants to devalue the life of the human because it is a human life. In just a few decades, this ideological fight has become more of a political crusade. Ronald Reagan was one of the first governors in the country to legalize abortion in his state, California, in 1967, six years before the Roe v. Wade case that made abortion legal at the federal level. But to ensure he won the 1980 presidential election, Reagan wanted to mobilize the evangelical vote, so he changed his stance and declared himself anti-abortion. The duty of everyone here today is clear. We must not rest, and I pledge to you that I will not rest, until a human life amendment becomes a part of our Constitution. Since then, Republicans have maintained this stance. In 2016, to get elected, Donald Trump promised the evangelists he would ban abortion. Do you want to see the court overturn Roe v. Wade? Well, if we put another two or perhaps three justices on, that's really what's going to be, ha that will happen. And that'll happen automatically, in my opinion, because I am putting pro-life justices on the court. Donald Trump kept his promise, and during his term, he appointed three conservative judges to the Supreme Court, where the conservatives are now in the majority. And for the first time in 50 years, the highest federal court is in favor of overturning the Roe v. Wade abortion law. It's a decision that would give power to each individual state. And now, 26 conservative states say they are ready to immediately ban abortions as soon as the Supreme Court decision is announced. The result? The United States will become a medical desert for women who wish to have an abortion. A reality already seen in certain parts of the country, like Texas. For many months, the family planning clinic in Houston has been empty. The staff now helps patients travel to other states. Since this law has gone into effect, a lot of times we're saying no to people and having to help them get out of state. Patients have been forced out of these clinics since the introduction of the law SB8. Nicknamed the Heartbeat Act, it bans abortion as soon as a heartbeat is detected, which is around six weeks, when the majority of women don't even know they are pregnant. And what you're seeing on the ultrasound machine is a flickering of some cells that eventually become a heart, but it's not a fully functioning heart or anything like that. But this law says that if that's found on an ultrasound on the day of your abortion, you're not allowed to have the abortion in Texas. 
Um, and it's really, really sad. It's really unfortunate for people to hear that news when they're so close to getting the care that they need. Of the 40 abortion clinics in Texas, only about 20 are currently open. And evangelists are determined to completely ban abortion. They are using Texas as a testing ground for their most conservative ideals. Mark Lee Dixon is at the forefront of that testing. The 36-year-old pastor participated in the development of SB 8, a powerful law because it bypasses the justice system by giving power to citizens. The private enforcement mechanism says that the individual citizens can file a lawsuit against the abortionist and anyone who aids and abets the abortionist for the death of the unborn child. If a person is convicted, the informer receives $10,000. Mark has adopted this same principle, but at a local level. For the past two years, he has traveled the country from city to city to encourage local municipalities to pass laws to completely ban abortion. Centerville has passed it, Leona has passed it, and hopefully tonight, Mark Kay will pass it. These ordinances outlaw abortion from the moment of conception, while Senate Bill 8, the Heartbeat Act, prohibits abortion after a detectable heartbeat. On this particular day, he came to convince the city council in the town of Marquet, Texas, which has a population of 250. I thought they were trying to I'll call this meeting to order. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I'll say a prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, help us to make wise decisions concerning our city. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Uh, agenda number 22, Sanctuary City for the Unborn. Since September 1, no babies with a detectable heartbeat have been aborted in the state of Texas, and so we praise God for that. In fact, the Republican Party of Texas added to their party platform that they support cities passing enforceable ordinances at long abortion within their city limits. We don't have a clinic here, you know, so why do we need this? So this is a preventive measure. Absolutely. The answer to that is that the Biden administration last year committed to abortion access in every zip code. You guys got a zip code? Biden said at every zip code. Mark also hopes to block the Biden administration's response to the law, which has made the abortion pill accessible by mail. These ordinances very clear that uh, the abortion pill um, is to be considered contraband. It's not uh, to be uh, distributed in the community. Abortionists could not even mail it into the community. All in favor? Aye. You got it. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> a unanimous vote makes the town of Marquet a anti-abortion sanctuary. I don't believe in abortion. I'm so glad that they came to us, called me in about it, because I believe it's God's will. Marquet became the 48th city in the nation to pass an ordinance outlawing abortion and the 43rd in the great state of Texas. Awesome. Even if Roe v. Wade were not overturned. We've already found a way to stop abortion. And if we have to do it city by city, that's what we'll do. On all fronts, the anti-abortion movement is gaining ground in the United States. And after taking abortion rights for granted for many years, Democrats are fighting back. With 61% of the population in favor of legalized abortion, Democrats hope to mobilize those Americans for the midterm elections coming up in November. I report that by Valérie Defer, Pierrick Laurent, and Alissa Cavalli. Pierrick still with us, of course. Uh, going back to your report, Pierrick, as we ended there, we heard about abortion pills. Uh, that women can get through the post. Is this perhaps a way round this rather harsh, stringent, as some people might call it, legislation that's seeking to ban abortion? 
what is by far the simplest solution. You know, it allows women to do it at home without having to travel thousands of miles to go to a different state. And uh, these pills are very safe, up to 10 weeks in the pregnancy. They are already uh, used in about half of all the abortion cases happening in the US. Um, plus, there's a number of, of nonprofits outside of the US that are willing to send those pills uh, to women who can't have access to abortion in the States. Um, we talked to Christy Pitney. She's a midwife with Aid Access, a nonprofit based in Austria. And she believes pills will help. But in case anything happens, women, women might um, you know, not get the help that they need. Have a listen. You can go into the emergency room and say you think you're having a miscarriage, but people might be afraid even to do that now. So they might stay home even if there's a, a problem. And so these restrictions are terrible and they're not going to have the effects that the politicians are looking for, which is a reduced number of abortions. It's just going to increase people traveling out of state to access them going online to access pills, and then potentially avoiding the healthcare system when they really do need it. But, but I mean, forgive me, but some people listening to what you're saying and watching this program might think it's absolutely crazy that the Republican agenda appears to be dominating this issue, and it's usually men making a decision on behalf of women, which it basically is fundamentally wrong uh, on a human level. But there's actually a Democrat who's the president in the United States. Doesn't Joe Biden's voice count for anything in this? Well, I know, but first of all, we need to say that uh, the Democrats also bear a huge responsibility in the current situation, because in half a century, they have not made sure the abortion rights uh, would be guaranteed by the law and not just a Supreme Court decision, a, a ruling that can be overturned. Uh, the problem is now Joe Biden really can't do much. His majority at the U.S. Senate is very tight. Um, you know, just a few days ago, the Democrats did try to pass a bill to guarantee access to abortion. But it, it failed to gather the 60 votes that are necessary. So really, the only hope for the Democrats now is that this matter will galvanize their base, uh, that Democrats will show up in numbers to vote during the midterm elections that are coming up uh, next November. Uh, but, you know, if that will actually happen, that remains to be seen. Pierre, Vic, thank you very much indeed, Pierre Laurent, with Alyssa Cavalier and Valerie Defer with uh, our report. You can see it again via website, francereport.com. Joe Biden has spoken out to condemn what the Supreme Court is planning. Over 60% of Americans in a recent poll are against changing abortion rights in the US. They want to keep a woman's right to choose. We'll be following this story for you, of course. Stay with us here on France 24.